Making household products a safer, cleaner home. Of course, you all know that. That's why you're here, right? <clears throat> Susan McCarthy, aromatherapy coach with livingoilspro.com. Please welcome Susan. Thank you. Thank you. It's nine o'clock. We went in products for a safer, cleaner home using all natural, non-toxic, alternative, and just regular stuff that you probably have in your kitchens and you've been using for years. So I'm going to show you some really cool ways of, uh, of using those those tools. Welcome. There's handouts over here. I'm sorry. Before you sit down, if you could give them a couple of handouts. And then I'm going to have a drawing at the end. So I'm going to take one of those little drawing entry sheets. So we have a, a plethora of household cleaning products available in our stores, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of very easy to just go shop and buy them and get done. But why should we make our own household cleaners? Why is that kind of important? Because you're using natural ingredients. Right. Well, that's what they're talking about. I'm sure all you people that are here today are right on board with all of this. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm really not trying to preach to the choir here. But there might be some people that, you know, you might want to influence. And so having more information about this will help you. More than 90% of poisonings happen at home. I've, I've got some statistics here about uh, children age five and under make up more than half of all the poison exposures. So these cleaning products and things that are in our, uh, our cabinets um, that we're using every day are poisoning children, unintentionally of course. But then, interestingly enough, almost half of teen poison exposures are intentional. You know, teens, I mean, when I was a teen, I didn't even know about this stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but, I mean, teens find out, oh, if we huff, you know, some uh, bleach or something, that's going to give us a good high. Um, so we, we do have a lot of problems with the poisons in just our household products that can, can kill people. And it says household products account for 8.6% of all poison exposures, just the stuff that we have in our homes. The U.S. Poison Centers receive a call every 12.7 seconds. That's pretty scary. Medicines and household cleaners and pesticides top the home poisoning list. Yes. The cleaning industry is estimated to use 5 billion pounds of chemicals each year. Now this is a report that I got from 1997, so you know this has got to be a lot, lot more. 
the thing is, is that um, I think that our society is kind of a, a little germaphobic, and we've gotten that way because of the advertising. So, as you know, everybody probably has those little hand sanitizers they carry around with them, right? Mm -hmm. And those hand sanitizers are basically alcohol. And that's not good. It's not good for our environment, it's not good for our bodies. And, you know, we may be killing the bad bacteria, but we're also killing the bacteria. We've got plenty of seeds. Come on in. There's some handouts over here. Please take one. We're going to have a drawing afterwards, too, so fill that out. Chemicals that are known or suspected neurotoxins, carcinogens, or reproductive or developmental toxicants are used in our soaps and detergents. These are things that are common that we go to the grocery store and just pick up. Now, what they may say on the box is that if ingested, call poison control or not for internal use or things like that, but they're never going to say, this is a known carcinogen, right? They're not going to say that. They don't have to say that. Or that it's absorbed through your skin. Yeah. And, and so when you're using uh, like a cleanser to cleanse your uh, sinks or toilets and you're not protecting your hands, that stuff is going right into your blood system. You know what I'm saying? This, these toxins are getting into your system. Do you know that by using chemical products for cleaning, you put all these hazardous, toxic, and carcinogenic chemicals in the air too? So as you're scrubbing, it's getting in your skin, it's getting in your lungs, um, and then it's going down the drain, and then where does it go? In our water supply, right? And then, so we're ingesting it that way. They add stress to our liver and adrenals and compromise our immune systems. And these definitely can cause disease in our bodies. This is our, this is a problem. Um, when toxins are absorbed at a much faster rate than our lymphatic system can dispose of them, they spill over into the blood, bloodstream and wreak havoc. They make you feel sick. They can cause allergies and autoimmune diseases. Would you guys um, think that in the past 100 years that we know more people that have cancer, multiple sclerosis, lupus, Parkinson's, all these different diseases. Would you say that, that could, that's a true fact? That we've got more and more people, we've got kids, um, you know, that are autistic. We have older people that are have Alzheimer's and uh, dementia, a lot more than, than in the past. And I believe a lot of that is related to the toxicity in our environment, which of course gets into our systems. How does this affect our environment? 38 million tons of hazardous waste are disposed in our environment each year. Million tons. Due to chemical residue, the pollution inside homes can be two to times higher than outside. And that's because, you know, not only our cleaning products too, but all the building materials in our homes, our carpeting, our paint, the walls, the drywall, all that stuff can have hazardous materials. So we can be in, just living in our homes, you know, getting toxins in our bodies. Well, that's the bad news, guys. Are you ready for some good news? <laughs> yes. <laughs> OK, good. OK, so if you walked in here, maybe you noticed a nice aroma. Um, that's a, a, a essential oils that I have diffusing in this room. When I walked in here this morning, it smelled a little plasticky to me. I don't know what it was. It just smelled stale to me. Um, so I immediately started this guy going here. And um, what I was trying to do is, first of all, freshen the air so it feels good to breathe the air. And when it, it's not just covering and masking the air, it's actually these oils get in the air and they actually kill pathogens, airborne pathogens, and they freshen the air. So we get the benefit of breathing that in too. Removes toxins and cleans up the air. Essential oils have antibacterial and antiseptic properties. 
that make them excellent cleaners. Now I'm going to talk a lot about essential oils and using them for cleaning, but also some other products that you're pretty familiar with. So why, why, um, okay, now I am a doTERRA rep. I use doTERRA products. There, there are multiple essential oils out there uh, that you can go to Whole Foods, you can go to health food stores and buy. But why am I talking about doTERRA? Because they are the safest oils that I know. Because they don't have, a lot of oils um, that are out there that you get, they're therapeutic grade oils in Whole Foods and in health food stores, but they may not be pure. They may have fillers in them. They may have other contaminants in them. They're not certified pure therapeutic grade oils, and this is what our doTERRA oils are. In fact, they're so pure that we can ingest them. They're safe for ingestion. I would never recommend you go and something off the shelf and put that in your water, put it in your food, and take it. In fact, if you look at a lot of the bottles, they will say not for internal use, okay? Um, but this company has been around just for about five years, and now we are learning that the, some of the best ways to take these oils is internally. So this is what I'm talking about, doTERRA oils only. They're really effective because they work fast. So as you're sitting here breathing this in, this is getting into your respiratory system, which in turn is being carried by your red blood cells into all tissues and parts of your body. They work really fast. If you have some issue going on, and I put an oil on you, it's going to get within 20 seconds to where it needs to go and what it needs to do. They're also very, very uh, uh, reasonable cost-wise. Okay, Pennies per drop. And I'll show you how that's going to save you money using them to make household products, too. So here's some oils that are excellent for cleaning. And as you notice, they're all citrus oils. Now I'd like to pass around a lemon oil for you. You can, you can smell it, you can taste it. It's pretty strong, okay? Um, if you have a, a bottle of water, put some in your bottle of water. Okay, you can taste it. The one that's diffusing right now has, um, it's called Citrus Bliss. And what it has is wild orange, lemon, grapefruit, mandarin, bergamot, tangerine, clementine, and vanilla bean extract. Um, just by having that in the room, it is cleaning out airborne pathogens. What's a bergamot? Bergamot is, um, we're not too familiar with that in this country, but it's, it's like a, a little, it looks like a lime, it's about that size, and um, it's very similar, it has kind of a orangey. So to add a drop to your water, is it one drop? Uh, you can put two or three drops if you like. It, it will, um, it depends how, how much you like. You want to smell the bergamot. You can pass that around if you want to. So do you notice something about um, all these different oils here that they have a lot in common? Antiseptic. We got antibacterial. Uh, smells great is actually on every single one of these because they all smell great. So you can decide which ones you want to use. Now I'm going to talk a lot about the lemon today because lemon is just wonderful for so many things. We also have other excellent choices. Um, Melaleuca, some of you may know it as tea tree oil. Okay. So Melaleuca is its last name, Melaleuca of I forget. <laughs> um, or something. You know Charlotte? Melaleuca uh, roll of the Buddha. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, oops. Oops. So, um, yeah. The peppermint, white fur. A lot of our um, pine and spruce are, are very good for cleaning too. Now, you've heard of pine saw, right? 
Do you think that there's any real pine in pine saw? <laughs> Probably not. But you can make your own kind of concoction with some of those sprucey ones. Our On Guard and our Purify are blends, just like the citrus bliss that you're smelling. Oh, thank you. And uh, I'm going to pass around uh, our Purify here. This is another favorite one of mine. You can look on the bottle and it says lemon, lime, pine, citronella, melaleuca, oh, here it is, alternifolia, and cilantro. This is another one that I absolutely, yeah, I absolutely love to diffuse. And uh, I'll tell you what I use that for as well, is I use it for a deodorant. Okay, I put it in a little bottle, a spray bottle with water, and I use it as deodorant. We're going to talk a lot about on guard in a little while too. When you say deodorant, <coughs> like deodorizing your house or on your my house? body? Yeah, okay. yeah. I use that as a deodorant. And you can also use it to deodorize your house. Do they dry quickly when you use oh, them yeah. as a deodorant? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If you notice, if you get any of the oils on your fingers, they're almost gone like immediately. They're not oily, okay? Because they get right into your skin. So making your own household products is really simple. And you almost don't need a recipe, but I'll give you a couple. Um, because there's only a few ingredients that you need. So these are a couple of things that you might have in your house right now. I think everybody has vinegar, white vinegar, right? Mm -hmm. um, baking soda. Uh, these other guys here you may not have. Um, have you guys? Um, you know about this? Fells naphtha? Yeah, it doesn't have naphtha in it anymore. <laughs> it doesn't? No. Well, in the old days, I mean, I heard this is like a hundred years, you know, they've been making this stuff. And so your great great grandmother is going to know about this. Um, and um, I've actually started using this instead of a lot of like stain remover stuff. And it works excellent. I was eating a pomegranate. And you know what pomegranates do, right? When you're picking them out and they splash all over you. And I had pomegranate juice all over my nice pink top. And so um, all I did was kind of wet the shirt a little bit. And this is like a bar of soap. Ooh, well. <laughs> and, um, it, uh, and then I wet the bar of soap and I just rub it on the, you know, on, on your garment. And let it sit and soak. And all that pomegranate juice was gone. <laughs> so, anyway, this is a great, uh, very more natural product than a lot of things that are on the market. Um, these little guys over here, you're wondering, what is that? Looks like little figs or something. They're actually called soap nuts. And they're a natural product. They grow in trees in India and Nepal. And they contain saponin, which is a natural soap. Uh, if you want to find out where to buy these, just Google, and you will find a whole bunch of sites where you can order them online. And maybe you'll be able to find some place around here that might might have them, but I haven't, so I get mine online. So how are they mixed them? Okay, so you put six to eight half shells or equivalent in pieces into a cotton bag, place in your washing machine, wash on your usual cycle. If you want your laundry fragrance, add a few drops of essential oil with it. Um, you can use these uh, these soap nuts about four to six consecutive loads. Uh, loads. When the soap nuts are exhausted, they will appear darker and soft. Throw them on your compost and put some more in the bag for your next wash. So you're not doing any damage to the environment by using something like this, the soap nuts. Um, you can use them in the dishwasher as well. You put three shells in the bottom of the cutlery holder, some vinegar in the rinse aid dispenser, and your glasses and plates will come out sparkling clean. So you can try that. Yes? Do you know if they are uh, a sustainably harvested? If they are product? sustainable harvested? Yeah. I don't know. Because I mean, India and the power, yeah. uh, third world. Third world, are. yeah. I don't know if they're uh, sustainably harvested. I really don't. Okay. Yeah. Maybe you could do a little research on it and let me know. Okay. 
Um, baking soda is great for cleaning just about everything. It scrubs, it whitens, it deodorizes, it cuts grease. It's really great. Um, now the borax, that is toxic, okay? And it's a natural toxic substance. Um, borax kills germs, bacteria, fungi, deodorizes. You just don't want it. You know, that's one of those ones to keep away from the kids because if it's ingested, it can, it's toxic, okay? But it's a natural, more natural product. But I use it sometimes uh, to whiten up my whites in my, my laundry. But I don't use it that much because I have so many other things I can use. Uh, white vinegar and baking soda together are wonderful. I'm going to give you some recipes to use that. So going back to our lemon oil, here's a wonderful glass cleaner. I've been using this now for years. Uh, a cup of white vinegar, and I, on your handouts there are some recipes, so you don't have to madly, you know, try to write these down. A uh, cup of white vinegar, a cup of water, and uh, lemon or wild orange or any of the other citrus oils that you might like. Makes a wonderful, it smells wonderful. You know, the vinegar is a little strong, but it's so much better than a lot of those other cleaners. And it works really well. I'll, uh, lemon oil is wonderful for uh, furniture polish. Now, do you think that those lemon oil furniture polishers have real lemon in them? No. No. I'm sure they're all synthetic. They smell, oh, so, oh, so you know, you're spraying your, you know, your furniture and, oh, the lemon. But that's all synthetic. This is the real thing, and it works wonderfully, and you don't need a lot. Um, so they recommend uh, a little olive oil. What FCO means is fractionated coconut oil. Fractionated coconut oil is uh, a liquid uh, <coughs> coconut oil. Now, you know when you buy coconut oil in the store, it's hard, right? The cooking the, coconut oil. The cooking coconut oil. Um, because it has all the fats in it, so when it, the temperature is cooler, it, it turns hard. The fractionated coconut oil is uh, where they've taken the fat out of the coconut oil, so it's always in a liquid form, no matter if <coughs> it's 32 below, okay? doesn't matter. Um, ten drops of lemon, use a soft cloth. You'll be amazed at how wonderful your furniture looks and how it smells. And also, does anybody um, <coughs> have any leather clothing? Um, I do have leather jackets, and it's wonderful for cleaning your leather leather shoes, leather jackets, um, and of course it smells wonderful too. Your other things right here. Oh, thank you. I'm wondering how many drops come in a bottle, and what is the cost? <coughs> okay. Well, I can tell you that these bigger size bottles are 250 drops, and they all vary. All the, the prices, the prices do vary, and I'll go over that a little later. Um, <coughs> Susan, do you have any on guard? I got a terrible sure. cough going on. The on guard takes your cough away immediately. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and then washing your floors: water, vinegar, lemon or melaleuca, that tea tree oil, and um, some liquid soap. And I also have a, another product that I can share with you in a minute instead of just, you know, over-the-counter liquid soap kind of stuff. Um, but there are, if you're going to buy some, some of these cleaning products, I would suggest that you go to Whole Foods or places like that to get liquid soap um, and make sure that there are no toxins in there, okay? But they are more expensive. If you've gone and priced some of these things out, they're pretty expensive. So that's why we're talking about making your own. But two drops of liquid soap. Okay. <coughs> Would you like to, um, I can't really play this now, but I have this wonderful video. Um, have anybody used whiteboards at work or at home? <coughs> and sometimes the kitties get a hold of uh, the, the non-erasable uh, type of marker or even the original type, it starts building up. Lemon oil is wonderful. Now, if you've ever bought some of those uh, kits with the markers and the cleaner and all that stuff, 
and you, anybody in the office is starting to wipe the board with them and everybody runs out of the room because we're all coughing and choking, well, it's because that stuff is so toxic. Take some lemon oil, put it on a soft cloth, and it comes off like that. Just like that, with just a couple of drops of lemon oil. Removes, um, well, black shoe polish or some other kind of a, it, you're like, putting oil on my carpet is going to remove stuff? Yeah, it does. It really does. Um, you can also try, I love tonic water too, to get really bad stains out of the carpet. If you have an animal that has an accident or something, or you spill some wine, uh, red wine on the carpet, tonic water, excellent. Uh, vinegar and or tonic water. And removes, okay, you won't believe that lemon, do you ever get something that you buy at the store and it's got a sticker on it that you just cannot get that glue off? Take a little lemon oil, put it on, on that sticker, it comes right off. Also, do you ever use scissors in the kitchen and they get kind of funky after a while? Because, you know, I use scissors a lot in the kitchen, even to cut chicken and stuff. Um, I have special scissors I use. So it gets gunky. Put a little lemon oil in, in the little things there and it immediately gets rid of all that gunk. It's excellent. Gum in, in anything, lemon oil will get rid of it. So I don't know, does anybody clean their oven anymore? <laughs> I know, I know. I have my own automatic one. <laughs> but I mean there are ways, you know, sometimes you get some pretty good gunk in there and, and you just need it. Baking, you know, um, lemon oil will do baking soda. Um, I think there's a recipe in there, um, mm -hmm. so that it would help get the gunk out of the oven. Cleaning your tiles, kitchen, bathroom, um, lemon, wild orange, or rosemary with one cup baking soda, fourth of a cup of soap, a tablespoon white vinegar. Make a paste um, and use that to clean your tiles. And be sure to cover it and store it because it'll get real hard if you don't. Okay. So it'll make your um, sinks and tubs and all that stuff that you might use a cleanser now. This is a great way to replace your cleansers. This is really important too, guys. Um, cleaning the produce and fruit and everything that you buy is um, you can use lemon and a spoonful of baking soda and just. Fill your sink up and put all your produce in there when you come from the farmer's market or the store and let it soak and get rid of all those pesticides and, and maybe sometimes they put like a waxy thing on the, on the apples and stuff. Um, it gets rid of all that. And even when you're going to eat like a banana, don't forget that there may be pesticides and stuff on that banana peel. You're touching it. You know, in fact, if you cut through an orange or something, you're, you're pushing all of those toxins right through the fruit. So always clean everything, even though you may not be eating the rind or the peel, okay? But always clean it. I keep a little, um, a, a bottle like this with vinegar and water and, um, Charlotte was saying, give me some on guard because I might have a sore throat. I'm going to talk a lot about the on guard in a minute. But that's like a really great um, an antimicrobial product. It'll kill stuff like crazy on your fruits and vegetables. I'm going to give you a, um, this is a personal story that I have. Anybody have headlights that are getting real cloudy? And you've seen those infomercials. Uh, this is just a local thing where it says, we remove headlight oxidation polish and reapply and protective UV coating, restoring your headlights to their original clarity and being beauty. You'll see better, blah, blah, blah. $75.99, okay? Wonderful. So here's my car, here's the foggy looking headlight. And here's my foggy looking headlight. I use lemon oil to clean it. I used just about eight drops on each one of the headlights. Cost me 16 cents. Wow. Okay. 
Yeah, while well, it's right. So you just drop the drops in there or on a cloth? On a cloth, yeah. yeah so I used you don't a paper add towel. water or anything, no. just the drops. Yeah, I used it full strength. Yep. And look at that. Amazing. So our lemon oil. If you listen carefully, somebody and was the asking. Wind does not blow the sound up to Carson Valley or Carson City. <laughs> okay. Sing um, their music for us. This costs thirteen dollars. Okay, two hundred and fifty drops. I don't know, three cents a drop, something like I don't know what it is. Two cents a drop. Um, it's made from the rinds of the lemon, not the fruit. It's different, and it's great for all these things. And of course, you can put it in your water and drink it too. You can use it in your food. Um, so it's like $13. This will last you a really long time. You can also uh, diffuse it if you have a diffuser. 13 bucks. What's the diffuser cost? Uh, that one cost about 130 bucks, that particular one. This is a, a very high grade diffuser. And it's used in a lot of medical facilities because what, what this has is I just have um, a bottle of oil attached to it. It's got um, things here that I can control, like how long it, it goes on. And then intermittently, I turn, it goes off. And then I can control the volume. So I crank up the volume, OK, and more and more. It is just straight oil. You don't use water in this one. And so how this, long does it last? As long as it depends on the right. on the volume and and how long it goes on and off, but for a lot of people in, in um, like doctors' waiting rooms or um, in a commercial space, so they have it on for five minutes and off for twenty, on for five, off for twenty. You can go hours and hours and hours, and then they just simply turn it off and they go home. Okay, so that particular one is um, a nice one. We have other ones too. I prefer the cold water diffusers because when you heat an oil, it can change its chemical component, so it's not as effective. So I know we've, we've seen the ones where you put the little candle and you put the oil in the little dish and it heats it up. I mean, it's okay, you know, but it's, it's not really going to be as effective as using a cold one, you know, cold water. Real quick, I want to talk about, anybody um, know anybody that's got MRSA? Yes, you know what that is? <clears throat> it's uh, pretty prolific right now. It's a very strong bacteria that is resistant to antibiotics. And it's usually a con uh, contact in hospitals, public places. They're finding it in schools now. Um, it's pretty nasty stuff. And it usually uh, looks like a big open wound, OK? Um, people are getting this stuff and what they uh, the statistics that they're saying now because they can't they can't kill it they, you know it's one of those mutant versions of bacteria now okay and they say that everybody's going to have it someday everybody's going to carry it. it because of your immune own immune system it may keep it from manifesting we may all have it now for all we know okay but um, it's it's going to be prolific. So how can we get rid of this? This is a um, a petri dish that has um, MRSA in it. I'm sorry, MRSA in it. They both have MRSA, but this one uh, was incubated eight hours without our On Guard essential oil blend, and this one with it, there is no MRSA growing here. No MRSA growing here. You can see the little bit of MRSA growing right here. Okay. Um, there have been studies, and you can find them on PubMed.org, about using essential oils to kill the MRSA virus or MRSA bacteria. Um, it um, it also um, I mean it kills a lot of different viruses, the swine flu, H1N1, all that stuff. You can smell it. Um, you can take it internally. And what we use it for a lot is to clean stuff. Because we're so can be on tables. It can be in you know in um, medical equipment. 
can live there and get on you. There's another one um, called Pseudonymous Erosna, something like that. Has anybody heard of that one? Anybody know anybody? Mm -hmm. um, it usually infects the pulmonary tract, the urinary tract, burns, wounds. Uh, it causes blood infections. It thrives on most surfaces. It's found on medical equipment, including catheters, causing uh, cross infections in hospitals and clinics. It's implicated in hot tub rash. You know, you go into a hot tub, you don't know what's in there, what's brewing yeah. in there. Um, it creates a dark, jellish mass, like you can see there. Sometimes it's called algae because of the appearance of it. Same thing, this one without on guard, this one with on guard. So, our on guard comes in an oil, which I well, use a lot, but we also have a concentrate that is a cleaner. It's specifically made for a cleaner. It's got other stuff in it, but it's all non-toxic biodegradable. Um, this little guy here is 12 ounces, and this will make 12 of these bottles, okay? Um, because you only need two tablespoons of this. Put water in here. This is a 24 ounce uh, spritzer bottle. Put two tablespoons of this in here, and you've got a great all purpose cleaner everywhere toilets, sinks, countertops, whatever. Go ahead and smell this. Now, if I was passing around, like, you know, what's a good household cleaner that everybody uses? Like, mm -hmm. pine salt? Yeah, 409, and, 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 and I said, here, smell this, and squeezed it, he'd probably pass out. <laughs> I mean, I probably killed about a billion brain cells, you know, if you did that. You can sniff this all day long, and it's fine, okay? Let's tease the teens. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, right, get them smells, pop in this. Um, this is great for the house, but it's also great if you guys can go camping and stuff. And you gotta clean your dishes, and you don't want to be putting that in in the streams and stuff. You know, this is better. Use this stuff. Here's a great. Um, I you know I use vinegar too, but you can just use plain old water. Um, I don't remember. I don't think I have vinegar in here. But um, ten drops of lemon or other citrus oils, or. You can use this. You can make your own with the lemon and the water and the vinegar, or use this, two tablespoons with 24 ounces of water, or you can do half and half. So I have a couple of these around the house. I get these little guys from Dollar Store, okay? And um, <clears throat> I have them all over the place. You can make your own dishwashing soap here. Um, lemon, grapefruit, lemongrass, or you can use this too, okay? And um, you can use it in, if you're just washing dishes or in your dishwasher. You can um, put them, uh, okay, I wouldn't recommend putting this stuff in the dishwasher because it's too soapy, okay? So it'll, there are too many bubbles, it'll, you know. But you can use um, essential oils for your dishwasher. Okay. In the laundry, same thing. Um, look at your handout, there's a couple of ideas. And then you can also use our, um, our on-guard stuff. I love it. Okay, thanks. So what do you think of the smell of this? It smells pretty much like the other, just a little more diluted. Yeah, it's pretty good. And, and you know, you can do a lot with this, not just, um, I mean, like I say, you can wash dishes with it and, and laundry. And how much is it? I'll get to that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jump ahead. Um, because we just don't have time, I have a, a great site I can send you to to find out how to kill dust mites. And uh, we have dust mites. I'm sorry, we all do in our beds, you know, so in, in our couches, in all of our upholstered furniture, we have dust mites. Um, Eucalyptus is a great way to kill them, and um, so I'll I'll tell you at the end where to go to find out the information. There's a whole thing it shows you with pictures and everything. Okay, now we talked about people walking around with the hand sanitizers. 
Um, this is a great thing to use. I have my own hand sanitizer right here. This is what I carry with me. In this little spray bottle, I have On Guard in it, just with some water. I have 15 drops of On Guard with two ounces of water. And this is what I carry and disinfect my hands, disinfect countertops if I'm eating out somewhere, you know, uh, toilets, you know, public toilets, whatever. And that's what I use. And you can make your own. <clears throat> so the concentrate is $19. It includes, uh, did you just smell the clove and the cinnamon in there, the wild orange, eucalyptus? All with plant-based derivatives, very um, safe and biodegradable. You can use it multi-purpose, laundry, bathrooms, dishes, and straight if you really have a real tough job. Um, the only thing that they recommend is don't put straight on a hardwood floor. First of all, it's going to be really soapy, okay? Um, or natural stone, because it'll just go right into the stone, which isn't bad. But I have used uh, essential oils directly. I have marble floors in my foyer and all that, and I've used essential oils on them, and they just smell wonderful, because they absorb the oils. And it doesn't dull them at all? Mm -hmm. okay. No. So, as you can see, free of petroleum, ammonia, chlorine, bleach, borates, phosphates, nitrates, volatile, organic, clean. And, you know, I mean, it's it's good stuff. Mold. Mold is not good either. We don't have a lot of mold really here because we have such a nice dry climate, but you can get mold if you have water, um, you know, accumulating somewhere. So we want to um, get rid of it. This is a really good way of spray mold and mildew with vinegar. Wipe it down with melaleuca, lemon, and grapefruit essential oils. <clears throat> Borax is also good for disinfecting um, to prevent mold, but again, that's toxic, more toxic, but you can use that. Other oils that are good for mold, place a few drops of oil and wipe it down. And it, let it diffuse into the air uh, with something like this will, will kill mold as well. I had a friend who lived in a basement apartment. Um, the sewers backed up and all over his apartment, all his furniture rugs, everything, they had to remove everything. Hazmat coming in, you know, ripping it all up. He had to get rid of everything because of the mold. Um, <clears throat> I had one of those diffusers going because, boy, did it stink in there, you know, with all that sewage water. And that really helped. I had Purify going day in, day out to, to clean that up. It's fine now. Hot tubs and saunas. Uh, that's a hotbed for all kinds of fungus and everything. Um, add three drops of eucalyptus lemon or thyme. And for a sauna, um, put that in a little spray bottle, you know, in your, in your saunas, whether they're dry or, or wet saunas. Um, you can also diffuse, you know, have some uh, oils in the sauna with you. Wonderful. You know, put it on you and then let it go. Did you know that oils are great for pesticides? Mm -hmm. uh, peppermint is great. Gets rid of those ants and the uh, mice don't like it either. <coughs> Put a little uh, peppermint oil on a cotton ball and stuff it in the corners where the, the mice are going to come out. And then we have uh, another blend called Terra Shield. And this is an insect repellent as well. I use it on my uh, plants, if I get aphids on it. I also sometimes mix Terra Shield with peppermint and make a little spray. Okay, spray my plants if they get the little aphids on them. It's safe for pets and children, so you can put it on yourself. <clears throat> Vinegar is also a natural herbicide. I've heard people tell me, put bleach on stuff, you know, if you don't want stuff to grow. Um, I don't want to use bleach in my yard. So, so vinegar is great. And there's the terrace shield. I've got a special deal today. Here, you can, I can pass this around too, and you can spritz it on yourself. I don't think you have to worry about bugs today. It's too windy. 
tear shield. It's a bug repellent. And you can put it right on your clothes, spray your kids, spray your pets. I have people that have horses, they use it on their horses to keep the flies off of them. It work for mosquitoes and ticks? Yeah, yep. Yeah. It's tear shield. Bug repellent. So I have a special deal today. Um, I have a Terra Shield full size bottle, 250 drops, with the spritzer, 20 bucks. Okay? I got that today. And also today, a um, special sale. So if you buy both the On Guard and the Lemon, I'm going to give you this little book on essential oils. It's all kinds of information. There's also stuff in here about cleaning, using them on your skin, um, preventing illness, some ailment, common ailments. It's a really nice little book, using them for body care, so you can get that. I also sell these for $3. So that's it. Um, summing it up, it's very easy to make your own household products. Okay, And start Start with a couple of things like maybe start with this. Start using this instead of the 409s and the pine saws and all that stuff. Um, and your house will smell great. And oh, I forgot to mention um, when you're using toxic things on your countertops and you put food on them, guess what happens? It gets on the food. Yeah, and then you eat it. So this is safe. If you put this and it gets on your food, no problem. It's not going to kill you. It's not going to be toxic for you. How long do these oils last? In what way? Um, so I buy a bottle and I don't use it all in a month. Oh. <laughs> no, it, it'll, as long as you keep the cap it on. Years, does it evaporate? It will evaporate if you don't keep the cap on. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is if you don't, um, if you keep it in the sun or an extreme cold, that's yeah, not good for it either. But, um, it will last forever. Just keep it in the <coughs> See, I've got this little bag here, and I keep all my oils in that. You know, keeps them safe from the sun and from cold and hot. And um, it'll last forever. It won't just evaporate on you. But if you do leave the cap off, it will. I also uh, want to tell you that I teach classes like this and other classes in my home in Carson City, and they're totally free. Just Give me a call, tell me you're coming, bring friends. And I do um, I do this, and I also do holistic medicine cabinet makeover. I teach you how to get rid of you know, all the stuff you have in your medicine cabinet. And, um, and use essential oils for medicinal purposes. I also, um, if you haven't picked up any of these things here, here's a little flyer about my classes. And I also teach a class every other Monday, I call Cool Tools Monday, because I teach holistic classes too. So not just about essential oils only, but all about other things. So we talk about, um, I'm doing one now on oxidative stress and free radicals and what that means and how that works, okay, what you can do about it. So I have some really cool things, and, and I don't even know what I'm going to teach next month yet. I haven't figured that out. Because I just, some things just speak to me. But, um, so pick one of those up. And then, um, did everybody enter the drawing? Where do we put those? Okay, well, you're going to give them to the shop. Oh, you oh want no. You want to pick them? You want one? Everybody needs you. Yeah, everybody. Charlotte will pick those up. And then, um, you too? Okay. Thank you. Now, this here are um, some some of the websites I wanted to tell you about. Oh. She needs one too. Are there more recipes on the doTERRA website? Yes. Um, if you go to doTERRAblog.com, then there's plenty if he wants one too. Uh, doTERRA blog, and I, I have that up in queue, but I'm probably going to get out of here. There's a question back there. Oh, you have a question? I have a question. Okay. When it evaporates, does in does it still smell good when it evaporates? Well, when it evaporates, that means that it, it, the molecules just disperse, okay? And so it, it just goes into the air and it's gone. So when the molecules are there, like right now, we're smelling those molecules, okay? But when it evaporates, 
you know, it just like anything, water evaporates, you know, it turns into, you know, molecules are dispersed. So, you know, but you, so you, you want to keep the caps on these things. Um, I have a book passed, oh, there's the book. This is a really great place to put all the things that I talked about, about household hazards. A lot more in here, if you want to write that down. Um, it's a great thing you can download this report. Yes. Uh, what about hard water stains and things, trying to get those off of our um, sinks and countertops? Do yeah. any of these work for that? I would say baking soda would be one of the best things to try to use, and a little elbow grease, you know, for sure. Um, could you tell us about your pet thing that you have there, too? Your oh, sure. Um, I'll do that afterwards, but I, I think I'd have to pack up because the next guy's coming in. Okay. So I'm going to have to take this down. Oh, hold on. But, hold on. Um, Give us a minute. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know how we're going to do this. Everybody hand in their, their things? Okay. Okay, so I, I don't have a little. Anybody else? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw them all in the hall, and the one that's farthest will get me. Randy King! Oh, yeah. Man! Randy! Why is that yeah. <laughs> okay, Randy. You're going to get a tears on who's Randy. Yay! <laughs> all right, ladies and uh, gentlemen. That's my presentation. Thank you. And